puffing hard, the twins managed to haul Thomas back to safety. When Nelson arrived, bits of fencing, a bush, and a broken window frame. What have you gotten yourself into this time, Thomas? Well, I know it's festooned by my front, and it's now badly twisted. Hey, Donald. Wait till Henry and Duck hear about this. Aye, the other engines will never hear the end of us. They'll laugh and laugh for sure. I don't think Bertie and Terrence will hear the end of this. Oh boy, I've certainly got myself into a pickle, haven't I? You certainly have one. Come on, I'll take you out. Nelson took Thomas back to the yard and he was soon lifted back onto the tracks by Lucky. The fat controller had a quite few words to say to Thomas. I don't know why I bother. I really don't. Thomas, you of all engines should know that you can't drive yourself without a driver. I realize that, sir. Well, now you do. You obviously didn't hear how James became a runaway and couldn't stop. It took the inspector and his firemen to get him back under control. You were being childish. We did warn him, sir, but he wouldn't listen. So I see, Percy. Now you will have to go to the works to be mended, Thomas. The repairs to your front is going to be a long job. But that means there's more work for us. Not quite, Percy. You see, a diesel rail car named Daisy will be doing Thomas's work. A d -d diesel sir? Called d -d Daisy, sir? Yes, Thomas. Diesels, like any other steam engine, always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels certainly don't gallop enough to breakfast in station masters' houses, do they? Well, steam engines, as you have proven, Thomas, seem to. Thomas had a lot to think about while at the works, knowing that engines of all sorts must have drivers to operate them. Otherwise, they will end in a sticky jam. As Thomas learned, by trying to do something, he can't. Thank you.